zombies. They have been a mainstay of gaming since gaming has existed. Resident Evil is a notable example of what a genre being defined by zombies. However, we're not here to talk about zombies history within gaming. We're here to talk about just two games that have zombies involved. More recent games called Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead Choose the Seek and the Prodigal Son of Left 4 Dead developers. Back for Blood, two games over a decade apart that are so similar yet so different. Today we're going to be doing some compare and contrast the iconic franchise and let me ask, what makes a zombie game good? Hello, I'm Spark and these are my notes. Welcome to Spark Notes. Let's get into it. Starting off, I think we should talk about what is a zombie. Why are they important to a genre? I thought about this in a few different ways and I thought reaching out to someone who's not a gamer seem the most objective choice for this since they are cross-genre, cross-platform, cross-media. So I asked my wife, who's a big zombie fan, but she does not game. And so she loves all things horror, zombies especially. So I wanted to ask her, what does she think? She stated that she preferred a slower variety of zombies, for example, The Walking Dead, but she does believe they, are, they need to be believable. Like the Walking Dead zombies, the the history of zombies and how they became a zombie, not even became a zombie, but the origin, the outbreak, is important to her. I wanted to ask her one important question, in my opinion, and my question was, is hope important to the media? She said, yes, in a sense, it's important for a group of people. For example, a parent needs to be hopeful for a child. She also said a cure isn't important to the media, but the characters need to realize that this moment in their life would change them forever. I also asked a group of people, what three words that describe a zombie situation? One stuck out to me and I wanted to share it. Hell on Earth. Clearly there's something a dark tone about zombies. Is it always the case though? Does darkness have to be exclusive? I say no. I think a dark tone is appropriate for developers to use. There is often hope within darkness though. That would make the game compelling. The characters are cheerful despite the hell around them. That random chuckle of innocence. Maybe the characters reference a movie that this situation reminds them of. Much like Zoe in The First Left for Dead. A story of a dark zombie-like world needs humanity to be a compelling story. And I think that's something important to remember. The Last of Us is an iconic example of humanity and darkness. So the tone of humanity within darkness in mind. Let's look at these two games. So let's get into this. Starting in order, I want to talk about Left 4 Dead. And we're going to be talking about Left 4 Dead 2 in particular because, in my opinion, it's a superior game in every way. Left 4 Dead 2 t takes everything that Left 4 Dead 1 did and improves upon it, adds upon it, makes it better, and then just refines the craft of the game. If you want to argue this with me, you're more than welcome to in the comments below. I'll be there. Check it out. Left 4 Dead 2 came out in November 2009, selling over 2 million copies in the first two weeks on the market. I really don't feel like it's important to talk about the game stats too much, but I just wanted to give you a heads up on this player base that the game has built. I think what's important, honestly, isn't what's on paper for the game. But is it fun to play? Which this is going to be my opinion. So if you disagree, let me know why you disagree in the comments. I'll see you there. I'll, if you disagree with me, hit that like button. I'm all for it. Remember to subscribe while you're there. Left 4 Dead is a game that forces teamwork in the best possible way. The level of game design is quite simple. Go from point A to point B, but how you do is up to each player. The game, not me, but the game would recommend you do this with your team in every part of what. There is no small part due to the director, the artificial intelligence of Left 4 Dead that features a dynamic system for game dramatics, pacing, and difficulty. The director ensures that you play with your teammates. You wander too far, you die. Can't keep up, you die. Are you too close to a group with your team? You die. The director ensures that every game you play is different. Does that doorway have a spitter? Nope, now it's a witch. Does the director keep you on your toes? Definitely. I think the director does a huge amount of the heavy lifting in Left 4 Dead. That this game wouldn't be the same without the director. And Left 4 Dead is fun for decades later because of the director. The director and that artificial intelligence deserves all of the praise in the world. Game design in Left 4 Dead is impressive to this day. Gunplay is powerful. You feel like your bullets have purpose behind them. They have meaning. 
When you shotgun and remove the arm of a zombie, you can't help but just enjoy it. The game has incredible audio. You can tell what zombies are coming towards you based on the sound alone. Each zombie has a zombie subtype, has a unique noise and music cue that keeps you on your toes and helps you in your survival. There are many other videos that talk about this more in depth. I'll link a favorite of mine in the description by Dork Axe. He does a phenomenal first impression of this game and he does in depth on the audio. I really recommend that you check his video out. It'll be in the description below, probably the first link. Left 4 Dead is an easy game to play. Controls and mechanics are relatively simple. Makes it easy for pick up and play sessions. It makes it easy and convenient. Each campaign is in its own self-contained story in the form of a movie. I think that's just kind of a cleat not even a cliche, but just a notable point I wanted to make. There's no progress gained outside of the campaigns, which has its pros and cons, but this does make it easy to pick up and play. If you just want to play it for a game or two, it's super easy to do it. I highly recommend you try it out. Now, I can't talk about Left 4 Dead without mentioning the playable characters. All of them are unique to interact with, and they each have a natural, familiar way. For example, to this day, I quote a line from Coach, where he introduces himself, and he says, My friends call me Coach. The actor's delivery carries this line, like I said, I just said it doesn't, doesn't have the same meaning. But the characters feel authentic and real. And I do want to talk about the modding community of Left 4 Dead. It's huge, it's a really vast, important thing to this game. But it's such a big scale, I might have to make another video on that. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments. For now, these are my initial notes. I, Spark, get Left 4 Dead 2, a 92 out of 100. Now to Back for Blood. Back 4 Blood is a spiritual successor of Left 4 Dead. It did live up to the hype. There was a lot of behind the scenes drama going on to this game, and I honestly don't want to address it. Personally, I want to judge this game on its own merit. Good or bad, that comes from behind the scenes. It's been out for a little bit now. It will have some shakes. Back 4 Blood came out in October of 2021. I think the developers deserve a chance to put out a game, and let's just rate it on the game itself as the merits of the game. The developers have never released sales number. However, they did say they had 6 million players so take that as you will. Bat for Blood doesn't have a good system as the director, in my opinion. It does have its own way to force cooperation among the teammates. For example, I think a good example is the ogre boss battles that require everyone to target that one boss to take down its health. It is just a bullet sponge and it requires everyone there to help complete. I do not think these bosses are fun, in my opinion. I do think the bosses are fun. Each map has different goals, making a change of pace quite regular. The gunplay is definitely a downgrade from Left 4 Dead. The guns feel empty. My friend would say, you feel like you're shooting gummy bears. It feels unsatisfying and empty and hollow. However, this time around, you do have many more options for gun, and so many options. You have several guns, several gun classes, so many attachments is honestly overwhelming, and I kind of like Left 4 Dead's style of minimalistic a little bit more. The game also carries its progress outside of in-game content, which makes it harder to pick up and play. You have XP and like a currency system in the game that carry out on the outside of the game. It makes it hard to log back in and just play again. It's inconvenient because then you have to remember exactly where you were and your missions and whatnot. The world of Back 4 Blood is an uninteresting blend mess. The maps kind of blend together, the world design lacks character, and the audio cues are also gone. They may be there, but they're nowhere near as refined as Left 4 Dead's, and that is a downgrade in my opinion. Although I will say that the special infected are beefier and harder to deal with. Again, this goes back to their bullet sponge effect. Whether or not that's good for the gunplay, it does make the specials, like the uh, big arm guy, a lot more challenging to deal with. The guns that you can now grind for feel pointless as well because your guns that you have now have to grind and that's another issue i think you work incredibly hard to get really good weapons and it feels pointless if at the first special infected you've spent all this time working really hard to make a good gun first special infected comes along and it's a just a sponge no matter what you do it's still a sponge and that's just kind of unsatisfying as far as i'm concerned back for blood feels like the predecessor of left for dead the first one this game came out over 10 years later from Left 4 Dead 2, and it feels like a downgrade in every aspect of the game. It's a downgrade in fun, it's a downgrade in mechanical aptitude, it's a downgrade in game design. For that reason, after consulting with my notes, I, Spark, give this Back 4 Blood 68 out of 100. In conclusion, at the end of the day, Back 4 Blood is weird. It's a good game that will forever be in the shadow of Left 4 Dead. It's a little brother trying to live up to the older brother's curse to be forever in its shadow. Left 4 Dead was a smash hit in all ways that matter. To make a new game that added depth, that will not need to be overcomplicated, simple and fun, 
It honestly is a very difficult challenge, and I don't blame the game developers for missing the mark on this one. They're both fun, it's just very different in the same ways. These two games will forever be intertwined, though. Despite what people may want, the legacy will be there and they will always be connected. Who knows though, and maybe in 10 years my thoughts will be reversed. Maybe I'll be talking praise for Back for Blood over Left 4 Dead. I guess time will tell. We'll just have to wait and see, but for now these are my notes. Hi, I'm Spark, and you have watched Spark Notes. I'll catch you later. See you next time.